I was the one that warned you the intro was going to be quicker, and I forgot, Nicole. What are you doing? I am immensely excited to be reunited with my buddy. Are you going to sing a little like reunited and it feels so good? Good, of course. Well, look. Before we reunite you two, uh, I want to let everyone know wherever you're watching, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, uh, from the TV co-op, make sure that you follow, like, subscribe. That's a really great way to help support our shows. Of course, sharing them as well, wherever you are watching them is a great way to do that as well. And if you've missed any of our past shows or you're having trouble finding them, you can just head over to Hello Friends Pod. Dot com and check out the show page which is all of the show notes links where to watch the shows and any information we might have talked about but nicole yeah what if they're a podcast listener if you're a podcast listener please leave a five star rating and tell everybody else where to listen to it listen i thought you were prepping me for my intro so you kind of caught my I'm guard not. there I'm not. Look, and I realized I didn't pull my thing close to me, and that was distracting me. We're all good. We're nervous. It's, it's, it's spoiler alert. But of course, if you guys have any uh, uh, tweets that you want to tweet us or any questions, leave them wherever you are watching these shows. Of course, I can see them, or you can tweet me them at uh, TV Co Live. Just tweet me using the hashtag TV Co Live. Tweet us. Tweet anyone. It doesn't matter. Just use the hashtag, and we're good. Okay, Nicole. Now, yes. without further ado. Yeah. I give it over to you. Oh, gosh. My friends, as you know, in that house, I may have only lasted two weeks on BB-22, but there was somebody that I connected with literally night one. Uh, he was my final two, my ride or die, until the wheels fall off, as he said. It is the incomparable, someone that I commend for making it as far as he did, because he's just so strong and amazing. It is the one, the only... K Campalicious, Kevin. Kevin. Hi. Oh my Kevin. gosh. We look so cute in our boxes. No, I like boom. you. Boom. 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 Kevin. Okay. Yes. Look at you in a box, number one. <laughs> And I have to say, just to touch for one second on what Nicole said, I'm mad at you, Kevin. Why? I'm mad at myself, so join the club. What's, what's up? <laughs> You made me cry watching Big Brother. When? You I cried have not too, I cried I, too. I do not too. cry during family segments. I do not cry. I do not I don't think I've ever cried a lot, ever, even watching Big Brother. When you got in that thing and you voted for Nicole and you were like, into the wheels fall off, and I'm watching it live with everyone, and I'm just like, <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Oh it's like tear, my gosh. tear, tear, because we thought, and I know um, you probably haven't watched it back yet, but when we were watching that episode live, there was a second where we were like, Kevin voted, obviously, but then Enzo voted for Nicole, and then we're like, oh my god, is Nicole staying? We were all mentally prepared for Nicole to be leaving right now. We don't know what's happening. It was like an emotional roller coaster that episode. Oh my gosh, I know it was emotional for me. I'm sure it was emotional for you, Nicole. Was um, what was the vote? The oh vote god. was, oh my gosh, whatever it was. Did I only to vote two. for you? Just you and Enzo. You and Enzo. Yeah, so it had to be two Enzo? whatever. Vote. I know. It's, I went out on stage and Julie's like, who was the other vote? And I'm like, I guess it was Janelle. I told her not to vote for me and she didn't listen. And she's like, no, it was Enzo. <laughs> I thought it was Janelle. Yeah, I know. Did, Isn't that like. Did Enzo say random? why? I think that he just said, like, he liked my speech and he was like, why not? Like, I want, I'm going to vote. <laughs> Um, that's like, not it. <laughs> that's not the truth, no, so he, Nicole. Originally, he said that. Then he changed his story. Oh, what did he change his story to, Nicole? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Nicole obviously has amnesia on this, Kevin. Because clip Why? after clip that comes out, Nicole likes to pretend like she hasn't heard about it. Um, Enzo claimed several times on the feed he had a crush on Nicole, and he kept talking about his crush on Nicole. Oh, and Nicole pretends like she doesn't God. know about it. Oh, uh, my God. He no, was Kevin. saying that he was trying to, like, have a show mask. Mm. I thought that was a joke. Stop, you guys. You guys are being ridiculous. That was a joke. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Oh, look, I'm not pushing for that no, show, like, 
blink once if that was for real. No, text me, girl. Text me. It's like, uh uh-uh. <laughs> Look. I know nothing. I was there for two weeks. I was in the have not room. Then I was nominated. Then I was always crying that I was focused on other things. <laughs> Oh my God! Did you want to pet the meow meow? Do you, you know what I'm saying? You, he oh, was looking up God, a bit. No, <laughs> I want Nicole. No. Was Enzo not looking really fit though? I mean, the abs. He was. He oh. was. Yes, extremely. Yes, this is. And that. isn't he in your area? Let's uh-huh. make this happen. Ooh. Look. First of I just all, like the trajectory of this episode. We have so <laughs> many viewers watching. This is not a setup. This is a examination of Kevin's perspective on the game. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't be mad at that. You know, he's a little seasoned, you know. Do you oh god, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Actually, no, no. I have to say, um we, you know, we saw a lot of things in that house, but we also had uh your your man on. And then I just saw you tweet a picture on Instagram of him doing, like, the filming and all of those things for you. Uh, I think your man's pretty fit, too, Kevin. Oh, he's super fit. He is, like, a gym freak. By the way, I haven't even seen my package, like, the intro package that we filmed together. He was like, we filmed so much crap together, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you did, too, Nicole. Eric, did you help Nicole? Yes. Oh my God. Didn't they make you record so much ridiculous stuff? So he was like, of all the stuff they showed, they showed like the dumbest like thing that we filmed ever. I'm like, oh great. You know, I was looking I sickening on every other shot, and then they showed the dumbest thing. They did the same thing to me. I know my sisters were telling me when I watched it back, the one like dopey joke I made, I, I should have known they were filming, but I was like, ring ring, who's there? My gut. And I was just joking. And of course, they captured that and used it. And I was like, no. Oh, my god! Not gosh. the embarrassing stuff. <laughs> I, um, yeah, there was a lot. What else happened with you, Nicole? A spider, when we were filming it, a spider literally fell on her face. Yep. And we thought that was going to make the filming of it. I was actually very shocked that it didn't. Because we it was like a... 10 minute flip out of the spider on my face and Eric having to help me. And it was just bad, bad news bears. We should have known right then that I was cursed this season. That was a sign. It was an omen. It was like, this is going to be some mess. This season was such a mess. The, from the filming, from the jump, we should have known this is going to be, no, it's not a mess. It was hard. It was just really hard. Very hard. Do you remember? I want to go way back day one. You and I were side by side outside getting ready to play the star separate comp. And I remember because you were standing next to me, I was between you and Ian and you were all colorful and you like leaned and you were like, oh, you and I are both unicorns. I'm glad to see you here. And I was like, oh, gosh, this is my guy till the end. (laughs) Yes. When we were, is this, was this not on the show though, right? That was like behind, that was early on. That was like right off the jump. Yeah. And then oh we had like wait gosh. behind the wall. Yep. That behind the wall. Top. And mm-hmm. I remember like we were making jokes about like, oh God, Memphis or mm-hmm. Cody or Christmas is gonna get this. Cause me and Ian were like, there's no way. <laughs> I feel like that was destiny. That was the Big Brother universe bringing us together because the fact that the two of us immediately within minutes of going into the house were right next to each other. And then we were able to like actually talk a little game off camera and just, you know, like connect was like destiny it was perfect absolutely i tried to we tried to do that with ian or ian tried to do that with us right and it just was like what happened well that's what i want to ask you do you remember that because i remember the three of us because i think like memphis went then cody went then christmas went so it was us three behind the wall and obviously it's not shown it was during a live show ian turned to me and you and was like we should stick together Yes. And I remember I was horrified in that moment because I'm like, Why? do these two know each other? You know, are they working together to see how I react? Like, I remember being so uncomfortable because I'm like, wow, we're not on camera right now. Like, are we supposed to be talking game? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, yes, let's work together. Yeah. This is perfect. And then he like completely ignored me like within like yeah. hours after. <laughs> like, what happened? Yes. And that was the thing. I remember him saying that. And then like you said, a couple hours later, you had said, let's make the, what was it? Like the Quadorkables? Yes, Aquadorkables. And, yeah, the Aquadorkables. And he just wasn't having it. And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe that's a negative on Ian working with us. <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try a different approach. <laughs> Kevin, I, I hate just... that you're across the country. It makes me sad. 
I know. I wish I wish we can be closer because it's like I really do feel like um uh, when I saw you in the house, like I immediately connected. I was like, yes. Remember we're wearing like the same like color scheme. Yep. We were like right next to each other on the memory wall. It was like, yep. yes, yes, yes. And, and then it turned I... into no, no, no. So I was like, damn. <laughs> well, before we get to the no, 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 the yes, yes, when we, you know, found out we were have nots, I remember standing on the balcony and you pointing out like, look, we're both in the same outfits on the memory wall. Like, this is going to be great. And like, I think what people know about my gameplay, having watched me a season and two weeks, was, like, I find my one person, and that's, like, that's just the way I function. Like, last season, I'm like, I got my Cliff, and this season, I'm like, I got my Kevin. Like, that's till the end, like said, till the wheels fall. And like Eric was saying earlier, when I was evicted and my sisters called me, that was the first thing they said to me. They're like, Nicole... Kevin's such a good person. When he said until the wheels fall off, we were like, he's going to be Nicole's friend for life. So that truly meant the world to me. <laughs> uh, we had the same strategy. See, that's why we're like, we just immediately gravitated towards each other. That was like an immediate sort of thing. Which, by the way, that was so unfair that we became have nots right off the jump. I'm just realizing we should have been rewarded. How yes. dare they, big brother? Like, I was so excited. I thought once I won that first half part of the HOH, I was like, <laughs> I got this. And then it, they secluded us and it's like punished us for doing well. And Eric, you always say that. Yes, that was, I mean, so I know that, you, I, you know, you just got out, Kevin, so I don't know how much you know or what you've seen, but I'll just take this as I'm, we're filling you in on things you might have missed. And obviously, Nicole wasn't here to watch this either. A lot of the controversy um, on that premiere night was people felt it was unfair that Cody got to go while those things were still moving, that he had some no. sort of advantage because... He, but then there's all controversy. I will say to the flip side of that. Was it moving? Well, I Kevin, mean, there is footage because, you know, yes. Memphis went or whatever and fell. So when Cody rounded the corner, the one, the one was still very much going. So he went the other way. And oh that's when God. that's when Christmas, you, me, and Ian were told you need to wait a minute. Wait. Yes. Out. That's why they were like so honest to be like, no, wait, wait, wait. It's all jiggling. Yeah. I was like, Ew, right. why are they saying that to us? Sure. But that being said, I don't think that production probably thought that through. And then when they saw it, shit, what could they do? Yes. I will also say Cody won by such a large margin mm. of time, I feel like, that he could have, I guess, fallen off and done it again. But that was the first thing that people said was an issue. And then, yes, the second, a lot of people didn't feel it was fair that you guys got punished for winning a comp. Yeah. Oh, no you're like make. Oh my God. See now. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so angry. No. So it so, was jiggling. Oh my God. That's why I was like, he never fell, right? He never. No. He just went. Doo -doo -doo. That's how I wondered how he was able to do that. Because all, all of us were like, oh my God. Like, which ones are, which ones is that from the premiere? Yeah. Oh, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> which is insane, us. too, that three of the six of us were not in that six-person alliance. So, like, me, you, Ian, had we won that first HOH, the whole season could have been extremely, extremely different, which is very interesting. Oh, my so God. Oh, that's a good point Um, from Yay over uh, <laughs> on YouTube. They say, also, the balls for the men to place uh, neat were closer i believe than the holes for the females like when they were doing the tilt boards like yeah. you guys had to get it in a hole that was very close and yeah. all the females like had to go all the way to the end of the, the board end. that was another controversial thing all men. the females yeah yeah both female rounds we had it the ball was all the way at the end so that that's why in those final six Four of them were guys because all four completed, but it was only two girls. Me and Christmas were the only two girls to get the ball to the end of that thing. Mm -hmm. oh, so, like, I commend myself. Oh my like, wow, God. I'm up there in the ranks of Christmas in a competition like that. Like, thank you. <laughs> nobody was saying this inside the house. Like, nobody connected those dots unless they were. And I was, I was so I, out of the loop. So maybe they were, but no one was talking about that. I, don't I think it's like we didn't think of it. It's like, oh, I'm sure we all had a similar thing. But when I got home and watched it back. 
that's where I was like, wait, the guys had to do a ball that was so close. Why did the girls have yeah. so much trouble? Like you see it, for, you know, and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Right. And that's why they eliminated the girls. The girls timed out so much. Yeah. Not Nicole. Oh, my. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but Linda. I have to say, I have to say, though, like in regards to Cody, though, I think like being a soccer player, being like very, oh, I yeah. think Cody was going to dominate that comp regardless. Yes. I was more interested in. Uh, this is the only thing that I think is the real issue is if you guys, and I'm guessing I would have no way to know this is true, were not allowed to pick your outfits, I could see how the outfit the person was wearing could limit how they went through that obstacle course. I think that is an interesting part. Oh, like if you're gonna I was have... allowed to pick my outfit. Yeah, same. Okay, great. Um so <laughs> So, hey, I said, I don't know. Us, How would I know? They warned us. They were like, okay, this is going to be like a super athletic competition. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I got to look cute, though. So, like, uh, I'm not coming out in, like, sweats or nothing. So and I, I remember it so well because the wording was, <laughs> Nicole, make sure you can spread your legs. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is happening on this premiere? <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, we have so many questions for for A lot, you, yes. Kevin. And I of course want to let you guys know, keep putting them in the TV coach app, keep putting them wherever you're watching them. But uh y- we can ask you anything, right, Kevin? Like you're Absolutely. we can go there. Because uh, I want to start we're for real friends, so right. I wanna start with a hard one. I wanna start with like one that might be controversial. Oh, okay. It is from JP um, from New Jersey in the TV co-chat, and he wants to know, Kevin, in jury, when it would rain, would you guys all just hide under Danny's hat? <laughs> JP, shady, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, can I say something, by the way, regarding Danny's wardrobe? She, you know how we were allowed to only bring one piece of luggage, like in a t- in like regulation size. Yes. She had a body bag. Like and we were told, no body bags. Literally, they would show a picture of a body bag and say, big red X over it. You're yep. not allowed to bring it. And the literal, <laughs> she had so many outfits. It was so ridiculous, and I'm actually kind of jealous. That's the only reason why I'm mentioning that because I'm envious that she was able to figure out a way to finagle the rules so she can fit all those hats. And all those outfits, but she was always sickening. She always looked great in jury every single day. I was like, oh my god, that's a new outfit. Oh my god, that's a new outfit. And I here I am still wearing my same stuff. Thing. Sickening is a good term. Like you go, like, oh, that's sickening. That's like a compliment. Oh Nicole, Nicole, your outfits too. You packed really well. I was like, my god. I remember looking through your luggage, and I was like, this is clearly unfair. That all your clothing is like really petite and small. It doesn't, you know. Sure, you're like doll sized, so like everything fit perfectly inside your luggage, but you had a lot too. I, I, because last year I was so mad that I didn't have enough. So I'm like, this year I'm bringing so many clothes so I can wear a different outfit every day, which I still didn't do. I still recycled the same comfortable outfit. <laughs> but you also had Anita Vito in your suitcase. I she did. Took up space. I did. She took up some space. Mm-hmm. Her padding took up some space. Which, by the way, goes down in history as my favorite, favorite moment in that house. It was such a fun moment. Me, me, you, and Yvonne in the have not. Oh my god! Just dancing, having fun, laughing. Like, ugh, I loved it. Oh my! Why do I look like a giant there? Look at those hips. Because Kevin, we're next to Nicole. You're next to Nicole. I have to be in a full (laughs) split next to Nicole always. (laughs) How tall are you, Eric? Six four. Oh my god. Yeah, that so is... Nicole comes up to like right above Your belly my button. like belly button. Yeah. Ridiculous. I have to like bring a stool for her everywhere. <laughs> it's a nightmare. People don't People think that. that I'm a lot shorter in person. Like the comments that I get, like immediately no. when I got at the house, somebody was like, You're a lot taller than I thought. I was like, What? Like, you're I very thought. tall. I was shocked. Like having watched you on your season when I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, Kevin's really tall. Well, now you're going to make me look at my actual height standing next to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> How tall yeah. are you? 
Um, 5'11", I'm not even that tall. What? I know. I think I give the optical illusion of being taller. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just on all optical illusions. Like, good posture and, like, your presence. I agree. I agree. Yes, yes, that. Very much that. I have excellent posture. Yes. You do. No, who doesn't? All right, so here's what I want. Uh, here's what I uh, want to get out of the way. I want to get some of the more what everyone wants to know, I know. questions. I'm just being uh, difficult avoiding all of, the peace fillers. <laughs> I'm just having fun with Kevin, because that's what we do here, everyone. We have fun on these shows. Uh, yeah. One of the things that a lot of people are going to are blaming you for, Kevin, it's your fault. They are mm-hmm. blaming you. You ruined Nicole's game, Kevin. You filled her head with delusions. What? You literally got in her head. You set up a oh. little Kevin camp and you were like stabbing her in the brain and making her and do stuff. And a lot of people, you know, feel, I feel like a lot of, here's what I feel of a lot of the, I shouldn't say a lot, some of the fans, if they were a Nicole fan, they blamed you for Nicole's game. If they yep. were a Janelle fan, they blamed Nicole for Janelle's game. Yep. If they and like and no one's responsible for their own game this season. But what do you want to say about that and how um you played in the uh, beginning of the season with a lot of these theories that you had that were not necessarily true? <laughs> um wait a minute. Okay, so Oh, shit. Oh, God. Ooh, my God. Okay. You know what? Um, I mean, we have to say Kevin hasn't seen anything back. So yeah, as far know, as know, Kevin but... is concerned, um, he think... might also think they were Did they true. show me, like, leading you astray on the show? I mean, it, it, there. Were, let's put it this way. There was a lot of, like, um, we would see Janelle and Kaser being like, we, we want to work with Nicole. We want to work with Kevin. If we work with both of them, oh, we'll definitely no. have they the never numbers. Said Kevin. What? They never said Kevin to me. Whatever well, I would told you, Janelle and Kaser, it was always, we want to work with you, not Kevin. Which is yes. what caused that weird vibe between them. So I would go to Kevin and Kevin would be like, Janelle and Kaser. And then I'd go to Janelle and Kaser and they'd be like, eh, Kevin. And I was like, ah! <laughs> yes, the- you were definitely <laughs> caught in the middle. But you know yeah. what I'm saying. I'm just mm-hmm. I, okay, so- I'm just putting it generally. Oh, God. See, oh, I need to watch these episodes. That, because, okay, so it made me look like I was leading you astray. Okay, I'll take ownership of that. Um, I, I do feel like, Nicole, I did probably lead you Okay, let me, okay, hold on. Let me explain to you. You already know Nicole, but let me explain. I know, okay. I know. Believe me, I know. <laughs> so, I do think that there, that uh, Janelle did want to keep you desperately because I think David was being recruited by the, the larger alliance, maybe the committee or a branch of the committee. Um, but they were trying to keep David Um, and Janelle and Kaser really wanted to keep you. So I definitely know that. And I remember that feeling. Yes. Um, but I also felt like, um, because of the, the previous week, I was getting like receipts and whispers back that Janelle's campaign to keep Keisha involved bashing me. So there's one thing to keep campaign to keep someone there's another one to be like kevin's a liar kevin's gonna be a backstabber mm-hmm. kevin's gonna cut people like i was starting to hear things like that fairly early and so when i started hearing that i was filtering my feedback to you nicole through my perspective so it was like hey there's this person who's acting to my face like she loves me but behind my back i'm hearing people telling me like and that could have been the committee or those early members of the committee kind of brainwashing me too saying hey you know like janelle's talking shit about you behind your back but i was getting this sort of like feedback that okay this person is is completely manipulating things and and um not trustworthy to me and then what started to happen is i started to hear whispers that Particularly Janelle, I didn't really realize it was cases as much, but particularly Janelle was like um, becoming target number one in the house. Like everyone was like, get rid of Janelle. Yeah. And anyone associated with them started to get involved. Coming like, target number, we got to get rid of you. So what I started to do was like, I needed to make it very clear that I'm not with her because 
even though I was fangirling over her, even though I was like, I'm obsessed with her, I didn't want people to know that. So I was like, okay, she, you know, like uh, distance myself. Like she's, she's talking bad. She's actually like, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever negative crap I said. Um, so I think maybe those, uh, that sort of thinking could have influenced you to maybe not trust them, even though they, they did want to keep you. I do think they wanted to keep you. Um, but, um, that was just from my perspective. And, like, no, um, absolutely. And I agree with that because I know obviously now as well that they wanted to keep me. What I realize now really confused me in the house was when I would talk to Janelle and she would say, Kevin plays this game all the time. He, you know, last time, you know, he's snaky, he plants seeds. It's what he does. And I'd be like, but Kevin's my ally. And then I'd go to you and you'd be like, be careful. Like, you know, Janelle's like yeah. spider luring you in. And I'd be like, all right, so you're saying that about her. She's saying that about you. I consider you both allies. What's happening? And just like you said, you came to me through your perspective. I then filtered it through my perspective, which I'll admit was very tainted from last season. And I had the mentality of, oh my gosh, I'm being mm. Bella again. Janelle is doing to me what Bella did to me. Damn it, I should have seen it coming. So just mm -hmm. like, you were saying things through your perspective. I was then accepting them through my perspective. So I get a little bit irritated when people say that you led my game askew because had I had my head on straight, I would be like, no, Kevin, you're wrong. You both need to see eye to eye. Let's move forward together. And instead, mm -hmm. my paranoid brain was like, oh my gosh, yes, this is bad. So like, I think it falls yeah. on everybody. And like, I don't like when people say it's your fault or my fault. It's everything mushed together. Here's the gaggable part, though. That strategy of splitting people up in this house or making people like, I think that was like done multiple times. I, I, it started to make itself evident between Devon and David, Dave, Devon and Bailey, myself with those, um, them as well. Like people were planting seeds to kind of split people up. So that way we would kind of infight. So I don't think that was a unique strategy that Janelle used just for us. I think that what everybody was doing that kind of plant seeds of doubt between perceived um over like obvious coupling so you and i i don't think could hide the fact that we liked each yes. other and so then people just preyed on that and were like okay let's split them up a little bit and so mm -hmm. it just started to also reinforce though my belief about janelle in the house because as she started telling you things about me then i started hearing it. i was like why is she trying to split us up so then it started to yeah. really make me dig in my heels to be like yo back off be why are you trying to break me and Nicole up? Like we're, we're going to, you know, ride this out until the end. Mm. Um, so, but I do want to caveat this because I know that there's like a lot of fans out there for Janelle. I do want to yeah. say like, and, and Devon used to say this all the time. There's Devon the player and then there's the Devon the person. There's Kevin the player and then there's Kevin the person. When I was in the house, that is my reality. And that was my existence. There was Janelle who was literally trashing my name. So therefore, I'm like, not today, Satan. But when I'm outside of the house as a person, I'm like, I get it. Like, do what you got to do, Janelle. Like, I, I, you know, like, I'm not hating on her. I actually think I still have the same perspective of her as I've had prior to going to this house. She's a legend. She's an icon. No one can touch her. Like, she is, I still to this day believe what I love about her is she's this strong, smart competitive person who does not rely on just her looks to get through the game she actually fights and i'm yeah. obsessed with that as kevin the person yeah. kevin the player girl back up like why are you <laughs> why are you trashing my name like you know what i'm saying like when i yeah. was in there i was like why are you trashing me this is our you know 12 like we've barely moved in the house and you know you're already saying a lot of negative things about me so I hope people could understand that there's two sort of perspectives on this. And here's here's what I'll say. I'll say two really important points here. I don't think necessarily Janelle was trashing you in the same way I don't think Nicole was trashing Janelle. I just think Janelle was seeing it from yes. how you played previously, and she was assuming that you were going to be playing it the same exact way this go-round. But my frustration from anybody who says that Nicole was paranoid or you were paranoid is 
I think it's very easy for people to say that, and like the other people weren't paranoid. Well, depending on what you believe, perhaps some of those other people had conversations before they went in the house. So they already had a built-in trust with each other. They already had built-in alliances. None of them had to have paranoia with each other. You, Nicole, Janelle, Kaser, you guys did not have that amongst your group because you, let's just say you weren't friends in the real world. So you hadn't had conversations previously. You had no pre-built in trust there. So of course you're all going to be like, Janelle was like this when she played and Kevin was like this and Nicole was like this. You guys were playing a game without any built in trust. So it's and also just- too, that camaraderie and trust forms around power. Cody winning that initial power and not nominating any of his people and putting up the other side of Keisha and Kevin solidified to those threats close to him like oh, okay Cody's good just like had um I won that first HOH and not nominated Janelle not nominated Kevin maybe all of us could have gotten our shit together more and been like we are writing this out together and that's something that I always say is like Keisha myself Janelle Kaser Bailey Davon Kevin David we, none of us won HOH so we never got mm-hmm. that chutzpah behind us you know so that's what's unfortunate and i think what you were saying earlier is exactly what it is i don't think janelle in any way shape or form was like haha i'm gonna purposely trash kevin the person it had nothing to do with that it was just this is what i see i'm worried for nicole because i don't trust kevin let me tell nicole and you the same way you saw janelle as you did in the game and you warned me because you worried about me and then i was in the middle and instead of seeing it as, oh, these are two people who don't trust each other, but they're both wrong. I need to show them to trust each other. I instead was like, all right, I need to pick which one of you is right. And I'm going to I'm going to go with Kevin. Kevin must be right here. You know, that mm-hmm. kind of a thing. So I definitely it, there's so many factors into it. And I think just like you're saying as well, like I don't regret anything on a game level because I felt how I felt in that game because it's a game i say now that i'm out of it like on a personal level like i feel bad for not trusting people who have my back because nicole the person is very loyal and stuff like that so like nicole the person feels bad for being for not trusting what people were saying and doing mm-hmm. in a and game about lying like, and manipulating <laughs> i think that's why um julie threw me a question on finale night as far as one of my regrets because one of my actual regrets was not working with Janelle and Kaser early on like you know when I was in jury house I was like oh damn shit like we should we really should have like figured out a way to to get our, our shit together although with that being said there's a want and desire we never had the opportunity even if exactly. we all started working together none of us actually want anything to shift anything so it didn't even matter like the season Correct. was screwed so mm. um yeah And they were the targets day one. So, I mean, that is also another counterpoint. Disassociating yourselves with Janelle and Kaser also probably was a thing that got you further into that game, Kevin. Because they were a target day one. They said on the jury, on the round table the other night at finale, it was their relationships to people which made them be a target. People wanted to take out the people close to them because they knew what amazing players they were. They were coming at them for a reason, and if they couldn't get to them, they were going to take out their numbers. Mm-hmm. And Kevin, do you remember, like, right before my eviction, I remember being in the storage room and you and Janelle were both like, we could still make this happen. We could still, like, get you to stay. And I was like, mm-hmm. guys, we're not. Because I finally got the vibe from Christmas. I realized something was off. I was like, we don't. We don't have these numbers. I just spoke to Memphis. I knew something was off with him. I was like, this is not going to happen. Yes. And um, I remember telling Janelle do not vote for me because I don't want you and Kaser associated with Kevin. You guys can move forward helping each other, but don't block yourselves together because it's just going to hurt you even more. And that was my wish that maybe, you know, one of you could win down the line and protect the other two or the other one. But like you said, like, regardless of anything, we 
we, and I was already gone, but we didn't have the power and just so unfortunate. No, that was the, the shocking part for me on this season, which was how quickly things solidified and we could we could call it either pre-gaming or we can call it like just a sophisticated level of gameplay immediately within hours people had whoop glommed up to each oh. other um we you can say like oh i liked they just liked each other or they played with each other before and whatever the reason is within hours people just immediately solidified and mm -hmm. i found myself on the outs of that and immediately was like wow this is like this feels weird. This doesn't feel familiar. And, you know, that mean, and I gravitated towards you, which now makes sense because you didn't pregame either. So it was like two people who were like, hey, we're on the outs. And we <laughs> Where do like, we go? Yeah. And Davon said she didn't pregame. So then I, that's how it kind of makes sense that we kind of went towards yep. her. Um, and so um, the, the game had already solidified. And by the time you were nominated, in my opinion, uh, your fate was sealed. Once you got nominated, it was like, unless a Vita was one, which by the way, that Vita was rigged. Like, how dare they give a bicep competition? Like, clearly you were never going to win that. Clearly. Remember I was doing the practice with you? Like, they were like, okay, do the little practice situation. And I was trying to help you. And I was like, uh, between me and Nicole Curl, when I was trying to help you, I was like, Oh God, you are not good. I was like, there's no way also, I grabbed it. It was so fun heavy. Fact, fun fact about my level of anxiety. This is how severe my anxiety is. You helped me in the practice and I did better because I'm like, Kevin put the ball on the thing. It's Kevin. I, I got this. The actual round came and Cody helped me. And I remember being like, oh. Oh, okay, this is not Kevin. Oh my, and like, I, I already got so in my head. And I remember that moment of like, I'm so superstitious and I'm so anxious. Like I was like, damn it, where's Kevin? Even... Oh my God, you like, should have told one, me. But... I don't even, what was I doing? Did I give a ball to somebody else? I, I, don't think, even... you, I think you helped either Tyler or David. Oh, God. But yeah, I remember, and don't get me wrong, Cody's amazing. Like, Cody was so sweet. He's like, hey, let yeah. me know when you're ready. I'll put it in the middle. You got this, girl. Like, but I was just like, oh, my God, you're not Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know. When I grabbed that, it was like 20 pounds. It was yeah. ridiculous. There was not even, I couldn't even done that, so. I had no chance in hell. Have you seen my little spaghetti arms? No way in hell was that happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, two things. We saw Danny Donato on premiere night try and like lift that board and she's like oh my god this is the heaviest thing ever so i was like okay zero chance nicole's doing this and then you were like boop 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 so you don't give yourself enough credit however if they were going to make um a pov comp that was more suited for you nicole what would it have been like put the ball on the board and yell at it <laughs> it would be <laughs> Pick you the just ball yelled at it into the hole. It's your ally, and then not trust it. <laughs> yeah, Pick the cutest know. ball. Which ball matches? What? Oh, yeah, like decorating. Decorate the ball and make it the desk. <laughs> Pick the cutest ball and not trust it. <laughs> it's like a little rainbow ball. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah, that comp was hard to watch, but I want to talk about um another moment on the season, which was hard for a lot of us to watch uh with you, Kevin. Um, again, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but there was um a segment where you were talking about how you felt like um you were not black enough, let's say, to fit in yes. with the black community. But on the same mm -hmm. hand, you weren't gay enough to fit in with the gay community. Or you mm -hmm. were too, you know, you were talking about how you have felt like you're always split in between all these places and you feel you're not enough to fit into any one category or that people in sometimes judge you for that yes. um which was and very they showed hard both to watch segments kevin i don't know if you're aware yeah. they showed you um having the conversation about not being quote unquote gay enough in the kitchen and they showed you having the conversation with david out in the backyard about not being quote unquote black enough so they did show okay, both did, or, did or it not. look like i was talking shit because i'm concerned because i don't know because devon felt like i was talking shit about her and i just want to make sure i did i look like i was talking shit I don't think I, so. It was like an emotional. It was very much. It was. It was about you being. What you like, mean, like talking uh, shit, like as a per, like to other people in the house? Like, was I saying 
Did I single out Davon? Because I'm worried about no. that. No, I don't believe okay. so. Okay. Well, I know you. Were, I I heard if I remember correctly, like you were saying, like I re, you would say people in the community don't view Chad me as saying, no, people in my life have not viewed me as. Yeah, yes. you were talking I, like that's why it was emotional. It wasn't now. Now, you, okay. First of all, Chad, know. Chad has made me feel better. Chad is like, no, not at all. It was like an emotional. See, it was like one of the questions that people said. Please make sure you ask Kevin to talk more about this because it was, you know, like the dramatic emotional music in the background. I feel yeah, this so season weird. they very much. I feel wanted to perhaps make up for last season, and I hope they keep that um, same energy going forward. Um, in, in the realm of being completely transparent, there are some people in the chat saying, in the conversation with David outside, you did say Davon's name. So I don't know if there was maybe a, a specific memory. statement. Can you hear me, by the way, by the way, because my headphones died. Oh no! Oh yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Oh damn it! I called her out. Damn. Um, okay, well, um, first of all, I, uh, when I, Julie asked me that, she gave me heads up when I got evicted. She was like, oh, you had some important conversations. And I damn near bawled my eyes out again for the five millionth time mm -hmm. because I was like, I can't believe they actually showed that because I don't know if you guys know, but typically um, on reality shows, when it comes to the gay people, person typically what happens we get most flattened down like typically we get flattened down to like the funny one and then th they'll skip over our family package or they'll skip over like anything that shows any dimensionality or depth to us um and so this time when i went into the show i was like i'm gonna be totally vulnerable i'm gonna just you know, like get, show America more dimensions to myself. Cause like, I didn't want to be a caricature, like a, yeah. just a funny guy who's always like, you know, like, I don't know. So I wanted to be a little bit more myself and myself is actually very serious. Just so you guys know, like I'm a very serious person. And, um, and so I was gagged that they showed those segments, but it's true that I oftentimes, when it comes to, I don't think this happened anymore, but the first time I was on the show, the LGBT community, um, specifically the um, some of the hate was from the gay end of it because they were just, didn't like how feminine I was. And and there was a lot of it, like you're, you stereotyped and, blah, 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 and you, all this sort of like extreme negativity. And maybe to be fair, maybe they were just as, vocal as other haters but because they were all my own people it hurt the most and i remembered it the most so maybe i had a whole bunch of haters um but but when i felt like it was my own community coming for me i felt really bad so coming into this one i was like feeling that pressure of like oh god i hope they don't come for me for that and then when it came to the um uh, the biracial aspect of it. First of all, I did not think that I was going to ever talk about that on Big Brother. It just yeah. happened. I found myself in a house and I was like, wow, there's so many, there's so much diversity here. And like, there's a group of black people here that I'm like, yes. Cause like on my original season, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Shima and Natalie. And this time I was like, oh, there's so much more. But then I found myself like continuously. And it's not only Dave on, it was David and Bailey, like, whenever they would talk about the black people in the house, it would just be like completely erased. I would be completely erased from that dialogue. And I would tell them like jokingly, like, hey, you know, there's me, I'm like, hey, you know, but, and then, um, then, but I just continued it to notice it kept coming up. And so then therefore it just became a thing in my head where it's like, why am I being erased from from this? And, and, and on top of that, um, it's like a, it's like a, alienating experience you know like you're you already feel like uh, other you know and sometimes as much as you know nicole you feel like you cl you claim you're like unicorn status like yeah i'm unique but sometimes you just want to be accepted by some people to you know, your own tribe and so as much as i wanted to be like yeah i'm just me i'm unique there are moments where i just want to be accepted by people and that was a real moment where i was like I just wanted to be counted, you know, literally, I just wanted to be counted. I mean, we saw I, that conversation between you and Davon and where Davon, didn't she say to you, like, 
oh, I didn't realize that you were black until you had said something. Yeah. Because I remember There's... that as well. I think I got it now from chat, and uh, here's how I see it. This is, here's one comment that I, it seems like people are agreeing. It says, the segment on TV did not highlight um, Devon. It focused on how Kevin felt about himself not being Black or gay enough in the conversation he was having with Kevin. Then they were saying, side note from that, on the feeds... There was a conversation or a comment where you said you were upset because Devon said that there was only three black people in the house and that you felt excluded as if you weren't being counted as one of them. So I think that's the difference, like the aired show versus what happened on the live feeds. But I will say... um, I feel like that was a topic that, uh, you know, people were discussing when the season was going on. And I think that, like, both viewpoints... First of all, I feel like I have no right to discuss either of the viewpoints. So I try and, like, step back from it when it's that and let the people that are involved say it. But um, I think both voices are important to hear for someone like me. Like, I want to hear your perspective um, as somebody uh, who feels not accepted completely because of, you know, being biracial. And then I want to hear what it is also like for, let's say, a Devon who doesn't Mm -hmm. have that experience. And then, like, I think it's the way that we all learn and grow and educate ourselves is to not you know, attack the person for that, but yep. be open and hear their experiences and learn how we can work together in our different experiences to help everyone, if that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I don't think that, no, the segment on TV was very much about you, and that's why it was hard to watch. For me, relating to it in a, I've always felt the same way. Like, people have always said, you're too gay. You're to this or you're too like you don't fit in you can't host a show people are people don't watch a gay person be on a show so it's very it's i felt for you in that aspect and really the whole point of this of what i wanted to say kevin was you're you're gay enough for me kevin you're the <laughs> right amount of gay for me kevin and my answer is you're kevin i you're love kevin. You're kevin i don't think about it mm-hmm I know that's what David told me. I remember he was just like, you're just you. I remember that. And so that really, that's why I'm obsessed with David. He's such a, like a kind Mm -hmm. um, soul and heart. Um, But I I do agree. Like the, the conversation is a complicated one and it's actually a really interesting conversation that I would love to learn a little bit more about. Um, um, Shima from my original season has been texting me and I was like, girl, can I talk to you to understand, you know, help me understand this conversation a little bit further because I yeah. do think Devon has very valid points. Yeah. Like, I, I think she has a valid point and perspective, but we're having trouble communicating it to each other because when we do, it just turns into an argument. And so I would rather just kind of understand it fully and then uh, continue the conversation you know like i just i want to continuously educate myself because i i think we both have valid 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 points Absolutely. Is... and that's a conversation oh. i know i would love to see i know many would like to see again to have that level of education and see it from both perspectives because there is no this person's right or i'm on this side or i'm it's two different experiences where you both are extremely valid because of your life experience. And I think everybody needs to be educated on both sides to understand it. The grand scheme of things, the big picture. And I know people are not going to like what I'm about to say, but lost and can cruise over in TV coach has put it perfectly when he says education and communication are key for adult conversations. Hopefully conversations can be had privately and not in 
not in or on social media for people to pick apart. I think that is a problem. And I say this with so much love. I know people have the best intentions, but I, I mean, I'm sure you know where you will see where fans will clip out like three sentences and be like, Kevin, can you believe that? Like, and then you just think that encompasses all of what that person said or meant. Fans, some, not all, a very small percent, but there is a small percentage of fans who love to fuel the fire, throw the match, watch the house guests fight each other because they're bored, because it's what they do for fun. They would yep. rather yep. see you guys fight than get along. I mm-hmm. think. The difference between the first time and then this time, and you know Nicole too, is we're we've done this before, so I yeah. think we we kind of are more aware of that. So that's mm-hmm. why I see those comments, or and I'm sure Davon too, she's super aware of it. Yeah, um, there's a level of sophistication and learning that we've had from our previous experience to kind of filter through that sort of stuff. So I'm hoping to continue the conversation in general with anybody who wants to kind of talk about it with me um, in person. So that way I can fully understand. I wish I could have this conversation with my father um, because I'm sure he has a lot to say about it, but we don't really talk. So I want to kind of get it from other as many different perspectives as possible. And one of them conversations yeah. happen on television. So like, oops. But. I mean, look, here's what I'll say about Devon and, and what we know of her. She is a well she seems like a very understanding person. I mean, from the conversations that I've had with Devon in the real world, she's always been kind, compassionate to me. We know that she wants to be a minister. She wants to go out in the world. She wants to do good. I can't see Devon not being open to having like sincere conversations to understand people better more. I mean, I think that's why we love her. I think that's why we voted her AFP. I think that Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the Devon that we all know and love. So, um, uh, I, yeah. Wait, hold on. Is it not Davon? Because <laughs> I think Devon. she said if you say yes. Devon. I, you know, so I, I just, I have a speech impediment sometimes, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> she going to be mad I Devon. I think it's Davon. I say day. <laughs> But then when I do this show, I realize sometimes I have to say it out, like stretch it out completely. Or else then people are confused what I'm saying. Like Devon A, she doesn't like it when you mispronounce her name. Oh, oh, believe me. And as no one should, we should all just call her Queen and leave it at that. And now (laughs) Queen (laughs) AFP. Very understanding. Other than mispronouncing her name, she's very, actually very Uh understanding. So I do agree with you, Eric. I think this is, this ain't no thing. Like this is, that's why it's like, I think it's being made up into be a a bigger thing. We, we, the, the conversation that I had was a very serious one, and I'm just very grateful that CBS actually aired it. Like, my Absolutely. God. Right. Okay. I think I'm just confused. Are you saying there, because now Chad is confused. Are you saying that there is, you mean the, the, the segment is a bigger thing? Oh, no, 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 no. The, um, the, the feud between, like, the, the misunderstanding between me and um, Devon is... Okay, is I was unaware there was a <laughs> misunderstanding. So you just yeah. mean like in the house? Yes. Got gotcha. you. Okay. So, but what we saw, and I think that, I think you both got out of the house then. You will have time to talk in time. I think it took Nicole like two weeks before she started replying to people when she got out of the house. I think yeah. it's easy for people to forget. You guys literally just got home two days ago. I know. I'm still scrolling through my feed. Right. Trying to reply to people. I give you a lot of credit for even doing that. Like, I had my phone off for uh, many a days when I got out, and I was only there for two weeks, so. <laughs> you know what's really helpful is jury. Because when you're... Well, in- that's what I want to talk to you about. Your jury experience. As some, two people who have never been to jury, this is your first experience. I want to know what it's like, what the dynamic was like. I know you said you're very close to David, which makes me extremely happy. My love buggies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hung out with David practically every single day. Um, he helped me work out. We worked out all the time. Um, jury is like a halfway house, literally. So we're like stuck in this like ridiculous situation. And then it helps us come down from that back into reality. So that's why when by the time I actually got out, I actually feel like I was ready to re-enter the world. Whereas the first time I was overwhelmed. And I was talking to Tyler about this inside the jury house. And he was agreeing that 
the first time he got overwhelmed and this time he's like, yeah, this is actually a nice interim experience. So I wish you had that, Nicole, because I think that's probably that was your two week period. You were just yeah, using yeah. two week period to decompress. We just happened to have it in a jury. Jury mansion, I should say. <laughs> jury mansion. No, I hear it's a bitch. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> was- I want. And I mean, chat wants, everyone is asking nonstop, what's the jury tea? Is there any jury tea? But I mean, yes, I want to know that too. But I'm more, for me, I want to, I don't think you'll even be able to answer it. I'll just say this. There was an article that came out or like a public posting of a legal document that claimed somebody was arrested for yelling things around the jury house. Did you ever hear anyone yelling anything when you were outside? Um, The house or the jury house. The house or the jury house. I mean, I wasn't even going to bring up the yelling. (laughs) I mean, we all know that happened. They talked about it on the feeds. I don't know why we would say we can't acknowledge what everyone talked about on the live feeds. There's a lot of wall yellers this season. I I think there... Were you there, Nicole, when the producers came on? And talked no. about... It? Okay. Um, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I was a mere blip on the radar. <laughs> um, no, there was no yellers in the jury house. But there was extra security, a ridiculous amount of security suddenly kind of put into the house. So now that you're saying that, I'm like, yeah, why was there? Okay, so I thought they put extra security because I thought Ian was trying to escape. But maybe there's something else. (laughs) Well, I think maybe it's because they heard there was a felon coming to the jury house. (laughs) I'm sorry. We still do jokes here, everyone. We still still comedic recounts. Sorry, it didn't land well. No, so they um, definitely beefed up the security maybe midway through my experience. Suddenly there was more security, like, and we, uh, they put them in the front and the back. And, wow. But I don't think, I, there was no yellers. No one knew where we were. There was no okay. yellers in the jury. Okay, wait, so was that it? Because now, now chat wants to, there was like thousands of people watching Kevin. Now everyone is saying, Kev, uh, Ian, did you say Ian tried to escape? Was that a joke? Yeah. It- Ian needs to talk about this. Ian, oh. multiple occasions, literally was climbing the fences. <laughs> like, literally. Um, he was losing his mind. Poor oh, Ian. I felt really bad for him because he was the first there. So he was there the longest amount of time. By the time I even got there, he had already been there for like three weeks. Yeah. And he was um, really struggling with it. And wow. um he was fighting with the, um, like he was, um, he wanted to leave is the moral he, of the story. He, he really uh, wanted to leave. Um, I to mean, we point- saw that on the feeds <laughs> and we saw that in the house that he did. He said several times he did not want to stay in jury, which I loved when all fans would be like, he's going to leave. And I'm like, do you all understand what a contract is? <laughs> he would literally tell me like, okay, this is what I need to do. I found a house across the street. All I'm going to knock on the door at 145 oh. tonight. I'm going to see if I can get a phone. Like he would hatch these plans. Yeah, and- out. <laughs> I would just be listening to him like, Ian, you know, like, if you do that like because of covid as soon as you leave open the gate they're gonna just cancel you like even if you get a phone like it's gonna be a problem you know and he's like yeah but i can't stand it here and he oh, would think and you were there obviously a shorter amount of time did you feel yourself going stir crazy in the jury house like no, were you done no it, because it me david and tyler were doing a great job of positive vibes like we would nice. David is really good at keeping a positive energy. So like we would talk to each other because there was, Ian wasn't the only one who was struggling with it, but David and I would talk and we would be like, yo, we got to like think of the positive of this situation. We were literally in a mansion, y'all. We were paid to lay out in a mansion. Mm -hmm. Like I know we wanted to be home, but I was very aware of COVID was still a thing. Mm -hmm. I was, I, for me, one of the most shocking things that getting out of the house and the jury house was I forgot about the COVID thing because we were in this bubble this whole time. So like literally we did not have to yep. worry about like 
even like washing our hands that much because literally everything was like a bubble. So me and David would like be super grateful for this experience. And um, I did not struggle with it. I, I found it very, very refreshing. And in fact, I was telling, cause the, they would make the therapist, at some point the therapist had to come to the mansion. And I was telling her, I was like, look, I'm having a fine time with this. I know other people are not, but I'm having a mm-hmm. fine time because like it literally is a halfway house. It is helping me transition mm-hmm. into the real world. Mm-hmm. Cause when you, as you know, Nicole, for me, the, the first little bit of getting out of the house, you still feel like every conversation is being received. Yep. You think every whisper is something. So I, it took me a couple of days in the jury house to come down from that. Um, Katrina 2020 in TV coach chat is saying it very well could have been part of Ian's strategy. He said on the live feeds um, before he was evicted that if he went to jury, he was going to raise hell. He thought uh, the tension would make for good jury segments. So maybe he was just screwing with you guys. I believe it. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, I think Ian was just like, guys, I'm gonna escape now. Here I go. Literally. <laughs> Here I go. Off the fence. <laughs> literally, we would joke because he would be like, at 1.45 tonight, I'm gonna escape. And we're like, Ian, why would you declare the exact precise time? Like, Because <laughs> he wanted the cameraman ready. Yeah, he's screwing with you guys. Ian is genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that makes total sense. Because they That's were- That's actually really friendly. funny. <laughs> house Ian's like I'm getting segments <laughs> <laughs> and now Kevin I want to ask because I know um Christmas did not go to the jury house and I think this is common knowledge throughout the seasons that like the last juror goes to a hotel room um so the last person to join you guys was Memphis mm-hmm. I want to know did he still go to bed at like 10 p.m oh. no he would go to bed like super late. And we asked him, how come you would go to bed early? And he was like, it was strategy or something like that. He said it was a purposeful thing that he did. So in the jury house, he was staying up late all the time. Interesting. I, I could see it being a strategy, though, because it mm-hmm. did work for him because every yeah. pre-juror that left was like, Memphis ain't doing shit. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And then <laughs> Julie would be like, he's in the six-person alliance. I got you out. And we'd all be like, oh. <laughs> I was gagged over that. I had no clue. No Same. clue whatsoever. Every time there was drama, every time there was a fight, every time there was something, I think the biggest one being the Christmas Devon and Bailey fight. So, like, they'll all be fighting on the show. It'll be, like, the tense music, the drama. Then it literally cuts to the bedroom. Memphis is sleeping, and it's, like, the <laughs> lullaby and goodnight song. And then it, like, cuts back to Devon in the backyard. And, to, and I was just, like... This is probably a great strategy for him. Yeah. Like, he literally just avoids being part of all the drama. Genius. And thus concludes giving Memphis credit for anything segment. (laughs) (laughs) It lasts this long. (laughs) It lasts that long. There you go. That's my nice Memphis comment for the uh, episode. Uh, But yeah, I think that... It's crazy. There are so many. Uh, there are so many questions. And, uh, well, go ahead, Kevin. What I do want to ask you as well, because I know how I felt when Julie showed me the Six Person Alliance. I was like, "Oh, thank God, that means I'm not going back in." And I know um, when Davon was evicted, they had asked. I think Julie had asked her, like, "How you feel?" And Davon's like, "I'm just glad to be out of there. Like, thank God." Did you feel that sense of like, "Oh, thank God," or were you kind of like, "Darn it, I wanted to stay longer"? Because I know a lot of us had left oh. prior to you, so you kind of left there. I was completely, completely relieved. Like, it felt to me like I'd been hanging on for, like, weeks of just, like, the inevitable. You know, like, Mm -hmm. just felt like we were looking for any opportunity to turn the tide. But then it it started to feel like, you know what, even if we were to win, we would have to win consecutively, like, uh, in order to actually influence this thing. So at that point, I was just literally hanging on. And um, once I got out of the house, it was a huge sense of relief. I don't even remember what I said to Julie. I just remember just feeling like I'm so happy to be outside of this house. And um, I don't even care. Like, I didn't even care. You know, there, there are other times where, like, when I fell off of that wall comp, 
Um, and there was moments where I'm like, I wanted it so bad. Like, I remember feeling like that. Yep. But when I got evicted, I was like, thank you for putting me on my I think with you too, like no offense, having been nominated and on the block, what was it, four or five times? I think you start to just be like, all right, I'm making peace with this. Whereas somebody who is backdoored quickly in a week, it's like, what right. just happened? So they have more of that yeah, oomph yeah. in them. Whereas if you've been nominated, nominated, and that's something that I commend you so much for, because even with that big personal alliance, you made it so far and stayed so strong. And I, I don't know, I commend you a lot, a lot. It was so different for me because on my original season, I really didn't get nominated until the very end, like you, Nicole. Yep. This time, I was nominated within two days, it felt like. I don't know, immediately nominated. And then from there on, it was like you were your name was being mentioned, if not nominated. So like every single week, I would hear whispers, you're being nominated. And it would just drive me crazy. Like I, I It was such a jarringly different experience for me where I was like, I don't know why this is so difficult and I could not penetrate. I was boxed out, like literally mm -hmm. boxed out. And so I was grasping at straws. I was trying to throw out scenarios of like what could be happening because I'm not involved in anything. I, I just never encountered that um, situation before. Whereas on my original season, at least like I had one or two people who were on the inside that would give me yeah. anything. This time I literally had nothing. So it was such a Very hard. different dynamic. I don't know if this is something that you can answer, but I think a lot of us were wondering um, in jury. So we saw Devon um, say before she went, she was like, whoever tells me the truth, uh, I'm going to rally for in jury. Whoever doesn't, I'm not. And then we never really saw any conversations happening about that. I think the question that a lot of people have was, did Danny ever own up in Jury House that it was her idea with the whole David vote and taking credit? Like, did Devon ever find out about that? That it was oh. really Danny and not Nicole? So... We stayed up until 4 a.m. on triple eviction night. We were not supposed to stay up. We were not supposed to talk about game off camera. We were like, fuck, y'all. we're talking game. Like those, those four <laughs> managers were like constantly saying, you guys stop. We were like, fuck you, we're talking game. So we stayed up until 4 a.m. talking game. And um, the I was there at the moment when Devon, saw, you know how Devon has those reactions. She shown up as soon as Danny left the room was like, Oh my God, I just found out that Danny was behind it. She was so wow. angry, so angry about it. And those first couple of days, me and Devon were still Kiki best friends. So we would talk about it and be like, girl, what is that about? And then um, Danny, kudos to her. She's a very mature person because she, for the rest of the jury time, actively worked on her relationship with Devon. Like every single nice. day, every single, it felt like hour, they were together. And um, apparently, and I wasn't a part of that, so I think what was happening was Danny was just fessing up to a lot of the, the shenanigans maybe she was behind um, because mm -hmm. Devon was starting to put things together, you know? And so um, I, I, what, I remember those first couple of days telling Devon like, yeah, like, that was your girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I was like, um, I remember feeling a little bit frustrated because um, I remember Devon would specifically tell me, I think even in the house, like, no, they would tell me, Nicole and Danny would, no, 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 you don't understand, Kevin. Like, they would tell me. And I remember being like, I don't think they would. Um, oh. So, oh my God, there's the two of us together. Oh my God, look at that. I mean, not at a great moment, but. <laughs> yeah, that is, we loved you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I, I cannot imagine what it's like to play that game or have to face all the things that you guys face with in the real world, in that game. People thinking mm -hmm. that they know a whole relationship based on what they, even if they watch you 24 7. It's just. I, I give you guys a lot of respect for going through all of that. I did see on a lighter... What? I'm sorry, go ahead, Nicole. Oh, mine was on a lighter note. I wanted to uh, pivot toward, because you were in the jury, we have a lot of people asking about, you know, 
the tail end of jury and finale night, the different scenarios. So had it been oh, a yeah. Cody and Nicole, had it been a Nicole and an Enzo, like what, what was the general consensus in the jury house had Nicole been sitting in those final two chairs? Okay, so the only people who would remotely talk positively about Nicole was me and David. Like, it mm -hmm. was, no one was vibing with Nicole. That being said, though, there was a scenario where people were saying they would vote for Nicole if she made a big move like clipping Cody. Mm -hmm. That, so there is a consideration for that. So if Nicole went to the end with Enzo then, right? Yeah. Then people were talking about how they might consider voting for Nicole. Um, and wow. so- Makes sense. That's the only scenario where um, I heard then, anything positively about voting for Nicole. And then uh, an Enzo scenario, would it be the same thing if Enzo won and cut Cody or what no. was the scenario? There was no Enzo scenario. Uh, no, 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 no. If Enzo cut Cody, then the votes would go to Enzo. Because it's like basically yeah, exactly. saying whoever made that big move of realizing that Cody got to go, that they would get a lot of credit. But no Absolutely. one was able to make that move even to the end. We had kept saying that every single week in jury. If somebody cuts Nicole, and then in comes Tyler. If somebody cuts Nicole, in comes Memphis. Like, if somebody comes Nicole, in comes Christmas. And he continuously kept winning so no one could actually oh. cut him. So that's why he had a unanimous vote because yeah. it was like a sweep. Like, there was no opportunity. Literally steamrolled the entire season. So... Yeah. Which is exactly um, what we were saying like during our recap shows. We said if a Nicole or an Enzo wins and cuts Cody, that's how they win the whole game. Otherwise, it, Cody's got it in the bag. Yep. That was the only way. Uh, so, I mean, I think why people are conf well, not confused, but because we saw Davon say... I feel like she said on finale something like, don't let it be Nicole that comes around the corner. Uh, oh, at you know what happened there? What? We heard the final, we knew it was Nicole coming out. So there was audio slip. So we all already heard oh. that Nicole got evicted and we were all laughing at each other because we were like, we already know. So when Julie came on and was like, who do you guys think, Davon, who do you think? We were laughing because we just heard her say Nicole lost. Oh. That's what that was. Okay. Wow, they really, poor production. I mean, we have to hand Just this like to production. The, they know. did so much between oh, that, COVID that, and all of that, but they spoiled the triple. how beautiful was <laughs> you know, the was backyard so looking like the front of the house. That was gorgeous. Oh my God. They completely, we were all like completely gagged over the fact the backyard was so beautifully done. And, and all the crew was like totally secluded away. But I was so mad that you didn't get a speak because I was like, oh, my God, you look so cute in that little black dress. And then they didn't like talk to you. That's like so mean. Don't worry, Kevin. I did a whole like um, I like did this drone video that was like this. I just I, I find it hysterical that what people think matter to, I'll just say to me, and I don't want to speak for Nicole, but I know what matters to her. I just find it hysterical how like Nicole and I are out here like eating tacos, dancing in the car. Yep. We're making videos of people like, ha oh, ha bitch, you didn't get a fucking question. <laughs> you I dumb bitch. And we're just like, we're eating tacos and dancing. We had a real great season. <laughs> Like, like, I don't no, get it. I'm going to be honest, Nicole, right here, right now, uh, in regard to this season, this finale, this postseason, this here right now, um, I got my check. I was on TV. I'm hanging out with Kevin and Eric right now, so uh, excuse me it's while I wipe like, my eye. Okay? You guys are two <laughs> of what you're two out of like 300 people or you're two out of like whatever 18 times two is i'm not smart uh that are all stars in all of these seasons you guys are two 
all stars out of everybody out of 22 seasons that says a lot about your game and like a thing that frustrated a lot of us preseason when it came to you kevin was people were like kevin kevin where did kevin come from and we're like where did kevin come from like final three won all these competitions was amazing live feeds remember how we we're saying that people like you don't get credit. I saw mm -hmm. your tweet the other day where you were like, I was unaware that I was one of the POV holders. I think you said for, um, you know, for a person of color, I believe is what she said, but yeah. whatever. And I was just like, why are more people not celebrating this? Or why, why are more people not saying that these accolades are to be, like, respected within yep. this game? And I, I honestly think, and it's sad, but I think that the vocal majority, which is not in any way the majority of fans, I just think they like to do and say things to get the attention of the more popular house guests so if the more popular thing is attack nicole frenzel attack nicole anthony attack uh, kevin if that's what's going to get the attention of whoever i feel like they just fall in line because i find it yep. funny how you know people can say the same exact things and some fans reactions to it are literally completely different based on the amount of followers you have <laughs> Like, hey, I just find it you, very funny postseason. I think that's the social media aspect that I'm going sure. to go for. I, I yeah. still don't understand the Nicole F hate. So, like, I need to watch the episode. Well, let me tell you. Think, <laughs> so, like, it's still, I, but personally, for me in the house, I it's kind of like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I, I just was so confused, too, even in jury. I was like, why are people, some people, like, I just don't get it. I still don't understand it. I do feel like, she um, was definitely playing to America, but like, what? I feel like everybody was. So, like, Kevin, there was one very um, yeah. bad instance that I'm sure, if you're not aware, you probably haven't seen yet um, in the key room with Memphis and Nicole and Danny. I don't know if you've heard of it yet. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's that's a lot of the backlash with her laughing at Ian. Understandably, um, she should definitely take accountability for that um aside from that i will kind of like jump on the bandwagon with kevin living in the house um me and nicole had like our little hammock talk and i think we kind of developed like a oh okay i like you respect for each other um but i think a lot of it is people's dynamics not necessarily from this season i think you know it's just a lot of outside realm stuff mm. Okay, I have a theory. I mm -hmm. feel like America in general does not like to feel duped, right? Like they don't like mm -hmm. to feel like manipulated or tricked. And maybe she overplayed her playing to America and they were like, we're not buying it. Is that maybe what it was? Because from my perspective, it was overt. Like uh, out of all <laughs> the house guests, everybody was playing to America to some degree, in, with myself included. But to me, the number one person that was doing it was Nicole F. And maybe it came across as like, geez, you're Kevin. really- I think people okay. want people <laughs> want you to own it. People want you to, if you're in another room saying, haha, I'm gonna vote Ian out. What should I say? How should I say it? It's gonna be so good. And then you're in the DR crying. This is the hardest thing I had to do. That's when America's like, well, fuck you. So I think if she, own certain things in regard to like yeah i'm voting him out for a game i think okay. america was like all right you're not trying to play us right now but i know what eric's about to say there were other house guests who played america <coughs> enzo <laughs> yeah enzo was like this in the diary room every day kevin I feel so bad. I'm sorry, there was enough use in that. He'd be like, yo, I feel so bad. I feel so bad for Kevin and David. I'm gonna do anything I can. And I'm sick of the other dogs, sick of the other dogs. Yo, never getting any power in this game and I'm gonna do something about it. The first yep. chance I get, you better look out, America. I'm gonna do it. Vote for me, AFB. Uh, and then every chance he had to help you two, he didn't do it. But 
I gotta hand it to Enzo. And I hate to say it, I gotta hand it to Nicole Frenzel too. If you wanna be win Big Brother, you have to play production, I feel. I know it's not a popular answer. You can't tell them what you're thinking. You have to play America because, yep. or they'll destroy your whole life. And you have to play the house. So those are all three things that you have to play. The yep. only, and I will say this again, 100%, I think the Nicole Frenzel, um, her laughing about Ian, I do hope she comes out. I hope she takes accountability for that. I think she can use her platform to spread awareness, and that is an amazing start. The side note, or the part that was frustrating to me about watching it happen in real time, aside from that, is that it all seemed to be pinned on her when Memphis was the one that was having the conversation, started the conversation, and it goes back to the women in Big Brother are never respected. Like, if you literally laugh, and again, I am not saying that the laughing was good, or, but she laughed. Memphis is the one actually saying it, and, like, fueling, and all of the articles, everything written, like Memphis started it, is like the like a little blip of one sentence where it's like, go yeah. for her job, go for her this. And, and yes, I think there should be repercussions for what happened with her, but it's just, it's frustrating in What's Big Brother. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's frustrating in Big Brother to always watch the female oh. players, the gay mm. players, the minorities not be respected or treated at all the same as the straight white players. Let's put it that way. I can I can see that perspective. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I definitely something seems a little off with the amount of attention that particular situation yeah. is being put on one particular house guest in that room it seemed as if there's yeah. multiple people in that room so i know and we're that not saying that she shouldn't be held accountable we are saying that right. everybody should be held accountable and yeah. to a tier system the one imitating it being far worse than the person sitting in the corner going eh. and then with nicole belly laughing closer to the top but there were people also in that room like a danny or a cody or a christmas who were like eh. Eh. See, like they have to, they have to be accountable as well, but to mm -hmm. a differing degree than the person who initiated it and imitated it and started. Like he freaking started it, and ugh, don't get me started. <laughs> Did this make the actual show? Because that would be gross. No. Oh, thank God. Okay, yeah. thank God. No, I see. I talked to not. Ian in the jury house. He was starting to hear about this, and he would get really sad. And we would talk about it, and he because we didn't know what the exact incident was. He said. He said he was most offended by Nicole because she would treat him like a child or a baby. And he mm -hmm. said, because I have, uh, because he's on the spectrum does not mean I don't know how to boil water. He kept saying that, like she, she would make fun of, she would ask him if he knew how to boil water. There was some sort of instant incident where he had to make like, I don't know, pasta and Ian was super offended by that in when he said that in the jury house. And I was shocked because I was like, oh my God, I didn't even realize that you could offend someone uh, because if you overly treat, like in my perspective, Nicole F was uh, coddling him. Um, yeah. And he, he was offended by that. So that's what I thought it was. Like they were talking about him like he's a child or something. Because, and that's, and that's something I wasn't aware of, but I think in that sense, there's a big difference between this person's my friend, I respect them, and therefore, as I should, treat them as an equal. And then there's, you know, sometimes that dynamic of like, well, this person's my friend, and I had to treat them differently because of whether it's ABC. Yeah. So I did not know that that's, that's very unfortunate. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, treating them uh, differently just because of some sort of situation. Yeah. I mean... Well, I say this every single season, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, all there was a lot not bad. Not there was a lot bad. But can I also just season. say, and I'm, 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 I'm gonna get some heat for this, but I have to say it because for those of you who are maybe writing in the chat rooms disgusting words about Nicole F, I would ask that you stop because. 
we're all just human beings. I can understand not respecting somebody as a game player. I can understand disliking somebody as a human being, but there's no need for disrespectful and disgusting words. So get out of my chat room. Yeah, like, wait, you guys, first of all, I um, don't. positive vibes. Like, this experience is a crazy experience. Um, people are under immense pressure. The scrutiny is ridiculous. You guys all know that. The reason why we love the show, we're, I'm a fan. You guys are fans, right, Nicole? Like, I'm a fan of the show. The reason why we love it is because you can watch the feeds and, and see all the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and sometimes we're all no one is always good. Like there is always a little ugly in there. So um, yep. I think we should all be a little bit more like um, understanding that, hey, sometimes there's some learnings. Like I would see it if she was like, nah, but, you know, screw you guys. Like I'm, I hate people with autism. And aut if she yeah. was, ah, that's, ah, very ah, different. that's different. But for, from what I can um, get from her personality, I bet you she's willing to, acknowledge and and say hey i did not want to hurt ian you know yeah. what i'm saying i did not intend to do that and um mm -hmm. i just even that sort of positivity yes that and and I, I will say, not just Nicole um, Frenzel, but everyone. We should not be talking bad about um, anyone. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that I have always loved about, you know, as you pointed out in the house, Kevin, I've been doing these shows for 10 years. We both started back in the fun Superpass days. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> And the one thing that I love is that I feel like a lot of our main audience knows that we always give people a second chance in the real world. We understand, or I at least try and preach to people, game is game, real life is real life. And in the real world, people get a chance to learn from their mistakes, not have them hidden or not know what they've done and said and have people watching. So like, I like everyone to have a chance uh, in the real world to not just apologize but to apologize and show action which is mm -hmm. i and feel Laura, like we we live um, with words all day so i'm gonna say a actions. lot of the times i understand when it comes from hatred like kevin's saying if someone's saying oh f that person because of they're on the spectrum or because of their race or because that's very very different but if somebody is obviously coming from a place of ignorance Yes. You need to expose them so that they can be educated and be held accountable and learn from it and move forward. And that's what I want to see anybody and everybody do, whether it be in the BB community, not in the BB community, um, last season, this season, whomever, you have to give people that window to move forward and grow. And if they decide not to, then you can judge them. But for right now, you guys have been out of the house for what, like two days? Like yeah. give people a minute to like this avalanche that's coming at them, like give them a minute to adjust to it, take it in and then take accountability and learn. But that, and that, and that was kind of my point. I think with the bad, and there was not a lot of bad, but the bad things that happened in this season, I always say I, what my hope for the good that comes out of it is so many people watch this show. So many people look to all of you on the show and respect you guys and how you all handle things mm -hmm. will change how people handle things in the real world, or at least some fans. I think if you can even change one person's opinion, it is great. It is amazing. Maybe there will be someone who will say now, I didn't realize that laughing at uh, my friend with autism was bad. I just thought, ha ha, that was funny. Now I realize it's not. Or I realize how someone can feel not gay enough to fit in in a play. Any of those things, I think, if good can come out of it, it's the conversations that will come out of it. And I just hope people will be open to letting people make more mistakes when they talk about it. Let people be willing to grow and learn and watch people's actions not words is and uh, also understand people important. process things differently sure 100 mm -hmm. that's why i say actions and sure. not words because they're yep. 
The, the best quote I've seen so far this week was someone who said, not all people who pretend to be nice have good intentions. And there, I think nothing true do I agree with in life. I think wolf in sheep's clothing can be real. But um, we have to start getting ready to uh, wrap this show uh, up. But I want to ask you, Kevin, what was one of your favorite moments from the show? Let's just assume that all of the moments moments with Nicole were your favorite. Was there any <laughs> other non-Nicole moment that was your uh, one of your favorite moments in the house? Um, I want to watch the move-in, the live move-in. I was completely gagged over that. I was geeked out of my mind. They surprised me with that sort of a twist. So that I feel like that was the first time they've ever done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, it was. On- so maybe Big Brother over the top showed them live moving in, but not like a yes, not like a live like competition. Uh, yep. That to me was like I'm. This is I'm. I was so excited over that. Um, and then um, and then uh, also to one of my favorite moments was getting the call. The for getting the call to be on the show. To me, that's when I actually won because I felt like oh my god. Like you said, Eric, to be even considered an all star, even though like, you know, I was terrible at it. But even to be considered, I was like, bitch, I'm done. You can bury me now. My life is this. This reality (laughs) is like, oh, my God, I'm closing this book on my chapter with like the best ending one could have other than winning actual book hash. But like to be an all star is like the best. So to me, that was one of the Uh. best ones. And Kevin, in all honesty, you shouldn't like downplay yourself or self depreciate yourself in any way. And this is something I said to you like day one in that house. And I know we all have our moments, but you were and are an all star for a reason. You gave that game hell despite a huge alliance that was plowing through. You're one of us that lasted way longer, um, with the exception of Enzo, who was kind of like an addendum to the alliance. You and David. You held on for dear life and you made it the furthest of all of us. And I, I commend your strength. I commend you fighting. I commend you winning that veto. That was, <laughs> everybody knows how I feel about Pose and Ivy last season. Like, I I, I hate to see when you self-depreciate right. because you played a hell of a game and you're an all-star through and through. You won, you won Pose and Ivy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Pose and Ivy, I was one of the first ones that fell. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> Girl, is that not hard? I just feel like that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yep. And it was so difficult. And that you was won like... it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That now was... that's an all-star. That was, and we were all cheering for you. I have to, I have to say, Kevin. You know, Nicole works here at my house with me a lot. There are times when we have to do stuff like, oh, I don't know. I'll say, hey, Nicole, can you carry this iPad up the stairs? And she will literally somehow manage to trip over the iPad and fall going up the stairs. To which every time I was like, you better have a great social game. Yep. Hope your social game's on point. Like, the amount of time she trips and falls with me, I'm just like, you're screwed. Well, no, I feel like, Nicole, you would have done well on the wall. Because, like, the teeth mm-hmm. yes. would have, you, you're so light, too. You might have you might have done well on that one. The wall I did well last season, and it was a little bit wonkier than the one this season. So I want, I think I would have done well. I don't, maybe not won it, but I would have done well. <laughs> better oh. than us. Better than other comps. <laughs> Um, uh, I saw somebody uh, ask in chat, you said the moment you got the call, can you talk any more about that? Were you alone? Were you at work? Like, where were you when that happened? Or can you not talk about that? I think I'm going to post it on my Instagram story because I I actually put the video of myself getting the call because I, at first they, they texted me and then we did a little audition situation and then immediately afterwards, I was like, oh, my God, I just got the, the call. So I'm going to post it on my I just need to make sure it doesn't have anything crazy in there that would um, mess up yeah. production. But oh, I posted everything, Kevin. <laughs> I would just post it this, like I wanted to post as much behind the scenes stuff. Like I also have mm-hmm. a lot of like of the, the package stuff that they made me film. Um, so mm-hmm. I want to see how much I can post. I would love see, to see it. 
I'm sure that you know this, and I mean, obviously, this isn't a secret, and I hope it's not, because we've been talking about it for forever. Obviously, everyone knows Nicole and I do this show. We do it five days a week before Big Brother. Then we add our regular recap shows, our interviews. So, I again, I don't think this is a secret. When people get have to go on Big Brother, um, their public personas have to remain the same as to not lead to suspicion. So guess whose job it was to have to be Nicole on social media? Now, you might think this was easy, Kevin. However, I'm sure you might recall that there was a time when it was happening, and then it was later, and then later, and then later. So there is like a month of me being Nicole and having to, you know, we had to map out all this content yep. of like literally down to where I will post this photo under you and pretend like you and I were doing this on the, we like literally had to map out this whole thing, which is another fun complaint. I love when fans are like, ha ha, you did all that and she was out second. And I'd be like, ha ha, <laughs> we had an amazing fun time and you'll never experience anything like like it ha, ha. i wish people understand they don't affect me and we get a check <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting paid you're just watching what we're doing <laughs> that stuff too like i really enjoy doing the the getting mm-hmm. right it, the whole knowing about it i the, did they make you do like a photo shoot at home like i had yeah. to do all of that did, did they use your pictures they didn't girl i did three photo shoots and they used the sequester photo shoot <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure we could, I think that'll be an Instagram story that we should post, Nicole, today. Of course not of that, of another random photo shoot that I just happened to film, and it's what I'll post that context. But it was my favorite of Nicole. I would literally be behind the camera, and I'd be like, no, they want it more kissy. And she'd be like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'd be like, no, no, that looks like your poop bit. Like, more, like, sexy but kissing. And she'd be like, mm. They literally, uh, none, yeah. of none of that stuff. Nope. None of it. None of it. None of it. Did they have any cutouts? Because I haven't seen, what, since I left, yes. was there any like, cutout moments? Oh, final shit. Three. In um, finale, the final two, when uh, Cody and Enzo faced off, it was like bobblehead cutouts of us. Oh, so, okay, they showed us that in jury, but they cut out the actual competition, so we couldn't see what was happening. Okay, so. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they only show you, like, the, the introduction of the competition and then the results. You don't you don't actually get to see them competing. And there's also the comp with the sequencing the ball game, like the hot dog that was eaten and the popcorn that was missing. So Tyler had to explain to us what that was about, because we were like, what is this backyard? And then it would they would just cut to the results. So we didn't even know wow. what was shown. He tried to explain it to us and we were so confused. Like there's a there's a sequence of time. We couldn't even understand it. So <laughs> I wonder if they don't um explain it on purpose because they want you guys to have like the conversation about it on camera. Like it could lead to more drama if they don't specifically spell it out for you guys, I guess is my point. Maybe. They did show some competitions, but some they would just completely cut out. So I don't know if it was, it was HOH. Or I'm, cu- I'm curious, like Melanie's saying in the chat, we need a Kevin interview after he watches the season. I'm I curious know. after you see all of it, how it changes from what you were like told in jury. Like, oh, wow, that's so different from what like Tyler explained to us. Or that's so different from how Memphis explained it. Like, that's really interesting to me, like the two differing. Because you're still in that mindset of like, your experiences in that house like whereas me i freaking watched it all season so my experience is more as a viewer mm-hmm. right i'm scared though nicole so i'm gonna definitely watch a couple of episodes definitely the premiere i want to watch that one yes. you'll like the premiere okay cool um i have to say i have a feeling kevin will be back around these parts everyone regardless of anything kevin is saying how much they love you you and nicole dynamic everyone is saying just replace eric with kevin this is fine (laughs) whatever i'm not jealous but i will say and i don't even know that you remember this nicole but in case you forgot it, there, that that's the moment that uh, Nicole told me. Definitely not the moment she found out, but the moment she told me. <laughs> but I was on the she show. She wouldn't have told me till she was allowed. 
NDAs. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, that was the moment Nicole told me. And what a shocking moment that was. <laughs> oh my gosh. That it was very fun, but I want to hear all about yours, Kevin. So, now look, again, I will say, literally thousands of people watching across all these places, Kevin, you have a total overwhelming amount of support and love. Know that there are going to be people that, uh, like I said, I, in my opinion, are trying to get the attention of other house guests, so they're creating drama. I always say, go to the person directly and have the conversation. Um and focus on the fans that care about you. You're never going to win back the other people that think they know about you and your life. Mm -hmm. But people love you, Kevin. People love you. People love love that you're... Even if they didn't think parts of your game were great, they still love you, Kevin. And now, I couldn't get to all the questions. There was literally hundreds. So, Kevin, if you... If people want to follow up with you, ask you more questions, where do you want them to follow you on social media? Follow me anywhere on social media. It's K Campbellicious across the board. So yep. hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. I'm try. So I want to do this time is interact with all the fans. Because last time I kind of was like, Ew, what is this? I was overwhelmed. So this time I want to understand that there's a moment, a period of time. It's 15 seconds where I could have this brief connection with as many people who equally love a show that I do. So I'm going to try to go through as many of the responses as possible because I understand that this is like a short period of time. And let's just all kiki cackle, talk about positive vibes and stuff like like that. But like, we all have a favorite platform. So will you do more of like Insta stories because people, I mean, um, Insta lives because people can put their questions there for you or... Twitter lives. Yeah, do you go live on Twitter? Oh my god! I haven't done a Twitter live. Should I do a Twitter live? That exists. Yeah. Well, Twitter. Maybe. Maybe you stay on Instagram. I don't know. I've been seeing this chat, Kevin. <laughs> okay. Maybe just stick to Instagram for now. This I, chat picked I, the wrong Nicole on the wrong day. Let me tell you. I hope some of you stick around after this show because I got some things to say. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, do an Instagram live. Keep taking questions. Seriously, we hope that you come back here and talk uh, with us again, Kevin, when we have more time or when you uh, have seen more of the show. I think it would be fascinating. I always say, and you are a social media person, here's my advice, Kevin. The be- If you want to bring in a ton of people go live on Instagram and watch the episodes. Like, watch the... Or do it on YouTube. Like, watch the episode live with people and you react to it. Listen to what How chat is watching? telling you that's happening. What? How can they see what I'm watching? Because I kind of... They can. Do- oh, so they're just looking at my face as I'm gagged? It's called a watch party, Kevin. <laughs> oh, Okay. I want to do a watch party for the premiere. I kind of want to see what happened, what package was shown, how how that went down. Yep, mm-hmm. it was very fun. The premiere's were... good. I watched the premiere. It's awesome. Yeah, okay. you're going. You're going like, to I love even it. Know what the like? How did they do the the intro sequence? Like all that sort of stuff. So I'm. Oh, super... it was disappointing. Oh, well. the intro sequence of like our pictures, like the bam, 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 yeah. bam. It's, the they spot... only showed it like four or five times throughout the season. Like not every episode has it. Yeah. Oh. But how did and, it was like a surprise when they included it? Oh, you know, like you're, I still wanted to do the photo shoot or the video shoot of us like coming out of the water and splashing. How did they do that? They, th- it wasn't. It wasn't. Do you want to know what it was? You know, like when you go to like Home Goods and there's like that stupid picture frame where it's like six picture frames glued together. It looked like that, and then it was just photos of you and then your name. Hey. We each had like it. a collage of photos with our name uh, in cursive across it. Video. And I don't want to complain, but I was cut out of every Nicole Soto. I was like, oh, I was standing right there. I was standing right <laughs> there. I was standing right there. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, no, but I think it was you and your man in all of yours. But it was oh. like a weird floating picture collages. I'm more upset that there were and no Kevin, keys. We got no cast photo. Yeah, no cast photo, uh, no keys. Oh no, my. no bathing suit photo shoot, which no offense, you all are lucky you didn't get me in the bathing suit. <laughs> Did you get your box already, Nicole? No. Oh, okay. Maybe there'll be a key in there. No. I think so. no. 
We had keys because remember we had to turn them to do nominations. They were blue. But they I think like Tony keeps them. Yeah. I think he's going to keep. No, 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 no. He's going to keep my key because like. Don't they give? Oh, that's just for your final vote, whether you voted for Cody or Enzo. Like your actual oh, key, key, because yeah. that key had Kevin here and Cody yeah. here. You're right. You're right. It says right. all stars with Kevin. That you should get. Ooh, we'll get our keys then. We'll get our keys. Yes. Okay. And Kevin, I'll just take this moment to tell you that in the you know over a year that I've known Nicole, um, in the ten years I've been covering Big Brother, I just keep letting her know I've yet to get one item from the Big Brother house ever. Um, so just keep me in mind when you get that box, Kevin. You could <laughs> literally bump Nicole out. It can be a hello friends with Eric and Kevin. I stole so much stuff, Nicole. Did you take the ducky? I took one too. I took. I took a ducky. <laughs> I ripped a picture off the wall. So did I. So did I. So <laughs> hopefully they will give it to us. And your blanket. I definitely took that. We love it. Well, Kevin, we hope that you have a great rest of the weekend. We hope all of you guys have a great rest of your Sunday night. Nicole and I will be back. We have more house guests coming up. Of course, our, uh, this, um, the dailiness, the dailiness of the Hello Friends uh, podcast will be back daily starting next week now. So stay tuned for more jurors, more everything. Again, five-star rating and a nice review if you're listening on um, iTunes or your favorite favorite podcasting network sharing subscribing liking telling your friends is super great ways to help support the uh show and nicole final thoughts final thoughts uh make sure you are following kevin on all his socials i'm i can't wait for the rest of your journey i want to see all your footage from preseason and postseason and i very much hope to uh fly out to california at some point once COVID settles so i can hang out with you and the hubs and otherwise, um, just in general, like I've said, you know, during the show, I'll continue saying after the show, um, we're all just human. Yes, we are characters and game pieces in a game, but we're also human beings with real lives in the real world. So be kind to one another, be kind to yourselves. And of course, all of Kevin's socials, the links to everything that we uh, have talked about on this show will be on the website page for this show over at HelloFriendsPod.com. Kevin, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I just wanted to make sure there was no nothing else you wanted to say. No, thanks for talking with me. I'm so happy to see you both. Oh, really, likewise. I remember both of you. So I remember you, Eric, and thank you. It's so good to see you, Nicole, in person. Well, don't go anywhere, Kevin. You're not going anywhere. We're just ending the show. Bye for now, everybody. We'll see you guys in the next show. Bye, everybody. Bye.